Hello everyone, welcome to day 51. This week is a little bit of a step back week, mellow week. Um, we had a super fun week last week, uh, a little bit of mystery random workouts. We have two weeks left in our current program, Strong for Summer. And um, so this week we're gonna kind of downshift a couple things, just uh, make the intensity a little bit lower, uh, somewhat kind of like a recovery week. Um, without too much, too much step back, um, because we really want to gear up to put our best effort forward next week for our final week and really see where we've come in 60 days um, of working out. So uh, we are going to start on the ground on our backs on our mats. Have a set of weights handy. Nothing crazy as far as uh, weight selection goes. I'm going to use my tens. Um, if you prefer fives or eights, that would be fantastic as well. Um, or if you're used to, you know, slinging around 30 pounds, 35 pounds, maybe grab a 15 or 20. And we're just going to be using them for one little set um, in the middle. So everything's going to be going on a one minute timer today. And we are just going to go ahead and float straight into it. Um, we're going to be on our back on a mat and we're going to start with knee tucks. So. Uh, your one knee is going to be pulling into the chest, the other one stretching out in front of you. If you can lift your head and chest off the ground, you're also very welcome to keep your head supported on the ground. All right, ready, set, and go. Tuck that knee into the chest, take a nice big inhale and exhale, and then we're going to switch. So we do want to wake up the core, we want to wake up the muscles in the thighs, flexing those muscles into the bone. You can kind of just switch at your pace, but it's not supposed to be very fast here. Push your low back into the ground. Scoop and grab through the core. Nothing in your neck. Put a lot of press in that straight leg. A lot of pull in the bent leg. Inhale, exhale, and switch. Keep that core going super duper strong. You want to really tighten it in. Find a lot of ab flexion. Just keep it going. We have 15 seconds left. And next up, we're going to go into a dead bug. So we're going to stay on the ground, on our back. Tuck that chin, grab the belly. Five seconds, your dead bug. Your hands are going to go up straight toward the sky. And the legs are going to be in a tabletop. Okay, ready? Push the low back into the ground. Flex deep into your abdomen. Extend your right arm and left leg. Then come back. Extend and come back. So create resistance, self-resistance in that core, in your thighs, in your back. But the big focus here are those transverse muscles in your abdomen. So right on either side toward your rib cage, kind of toward the outer edge of the torso, but still in the front. Those are your transverse muscles. If you're interested, look it up. Google transverse abdominis get a little bit more insight into how important they are, all that's needed. The next step, we are going to be grabbing the weights. If you want, you do not have to. It's just an option. I kind of still want to keep some weights going this week for myself. But it's just slight resistance. Push your hips up into a glute bridge for me. And we're going to do a little combo set, okay? So hands come up. You're going to do a chest press so the elbows drop. And then push up, point your palms toward one another. Elbows drop right along the side. Keep your elbows bent at 90 degrees. Weights come beside your temples. Back down. And then press up. Point your hands toward your knees. Chest press. Elbows down. Push it up. Palms face one another. Elbows drop down 90 degree angle. Hold on to that 90 degree angle as arms go overhead. Drop back. Press up. Twist. Elbows come wide. Chest press, point your palms at each other, come down, overhead, or kind of like alongside your temples, elbows down, press up. Chest press, elbows drop, keep your elbows there, hands come back alongside your temples, drop, let's go one more, and up. Okay, flip it over, hands and knees, and we are going to hit a bird dog. Hands right underneath shoulders, shoulders right over the hands. Extend your opposite arm and leg and then tuck it in and then switch to the other side. 
Extend left arm, right leg, tuck it in, lots of core, and then switch. Extend, keep lots and lots and lots of flexion through that abdomen, through the back, through the hamstring, through the glute. Extend and tuck. Extend, exhale, tuck. Opposite arm and leg, tuck. Check in, make sure you're doing opposites. We get <laughs> mixed up a lot. Extend, exhale, tuck. Really engage through all of your muscles, right? Keep everything going nice and strong. Belly button draws back towards your spinal column. Okay, stay in those hands and knees. We're gonna do a little glute set. Keep your knee flexed or bent. Press through your heel behind and then open to the side. Dirty dog. So you're doing a hamstring press and then opening out to the side. Level off through those hands, grab through the core, and then that leg that's on the ground should also feel a little bit of work as well. It needs to flex and wrap around the femur, your thigh bone, hold flexion there. After this side, we'll hit the other side. Press through. Where's that belly? Hold it strong. Flex a lot. Get into that glute. Press it up. Drop it in. Open out to the side. Press it up. Drop it in. Open out. Keep that foot flexed. Okay, let's hit the other side. Press straight up toward the ceiling. Drop it in. Open out. Get movement and rotation through that glute. This was a fun little glute set last week. My booty felt it the next day. So good for that mobility in the hip joint as well. Keeping that going. After this, we are going to come up to standing. We're going to do a squat to forward fold. Press that heel up, belly strong. Flex a lot through that core. Drive those shoulder blades down. Point your elbows back at your thighs. Press it up, drop it in, open out. Five seconds-ish. We're gonna come up, squat, forward, fold. Open out, okay? Come on up, <clears throat> squat it down, hands on the ground, forward, fold, squat down, come up. Squat down, forward fold, squat, come up. Get that booty low, knees lying with toes. Straighten those legs, drop the butt, press up, drop. Stretch, drop, and press. Nice work, drop it low. Get those hips up high. Drop those hips, press it up, belly stays super engaged. Next up, we're gonna be doing a spider lunge side to side, so it's gonna be a nice low lunge. If you need to use your hands to get side to side, that's fine, but we're gonna to try to do it without the assistance of our hands. Press that butt up, drop it low, up. Okay, so face the front, wide, wide legs, hinge to your right, nice and low, come up, hit that other side. How low can you get? all the way down if the heel comes up on the side you're lunging into that's fine we're going for range here you really got to dig in to that thigh that we're pushing out of nice feeling a little heat that's wonderful but nothing too crazy many of you have joined me for my minimum one mile streak daily streak so add that in this week for sure, especially if you feel like you want that extra heart rate. If you're doing this in real time uh, and you're in Southern California or especially Northern California, Oregon, Washington, fires have been horribly nasty. All right, we're back to the beginning. Um, so I don't know if you can hear my nasal stuff going on. This time, leg comes up straight, the other one, flexes out in front, and switch. Pulse, pulse, switch. Pulse, 
full switch. So I did I did a run in on kind of one of our worst air quality days, and it totally got to my throat and nose. So be smart. Don't go outside huffing and puffing if your air quality is bad. Makes a difference. Flex those feet. Grab a lot through your abdomen. Pull, pull, and switch. Really scoop to that core. Coming up, we're going to have our dead bug. You should be really feeling lots of core through these two moves. Really all the moves, but these really, really take a lot of focus and get in. Can you pull the front of the abs down anymore? Try your best. For me, envisioning that someone's going to run and plop on my abdomen forces me to grab a little bit deeper across. Press through that one leg, pull it back. Engage a lot through that core. You're creating resistance everywhere. Even in the arm and leg that are staying still, you are flexed and held firm. So watch the knee that's staying right over that hip. A lot of times we like to draw it back in. And I want you to keep it super still right over that hip. Okay, next up, we're going to have our glute bridge with the little arm set. So make sure you can grab those weights quick. Here we go. Butt goes up. Flex into that booty. Chest press. Turn your hands. Triceps drop. Rotate your hands back, keeping those elbows bent. Press up. Open out wide. Chest press. Turn the hands. Elbows drop, weights come back by the forehead, elbows drop, press up, chest open wide, elbows squeeze in, hands by the ears, rotate down and press, open out wide. Drop elbows tight, keep those elbows bent exactly how you set them when they drop. So once you get your bend, Keep it there. Try not to let any more rotation happen. Chest press. Drop triceps. Hands go back. Drop to the ground and press up. Okay, flip it over for me. We're going to our bird dogs. Shoulders over wrist. Extend right arm, left leg. Tuck in tight. And extend the other way. Tuck in tight. It is amazing to me. Yes, even trainers do it. Searching new ab exercises, ways to get a strong core, develop the core. And this bird dog always comes up. Bird dog and dead bug. Everywhere you look. Good stuff. But you have to dig in. Get those flexions. Make it work for you. Don't just get through the move. Inhale, extend, exhale, tuck. Inhale, extend, exhale, tuck. Pull that belly button in, tuck. Okay, the little glute set, flex, foot. Knee pushes up and then out. Push it up, push it out. Work to keep those hips level. Actively flex through the inner thigh on both legs. So obviously we're getting into the glute on that moving leg and the glute on the supporting leg. But really try to work into the flexion of the supporting leg. You can get a lot done there just by supporting well. Flex a lot. Push through the, the fingers evenly. Right. So support your wrist. Slide those shoulder blades down. Where's your core? Can you grab any more through the core? Keep it up. One minute on this side, one on the other. Okay, other side. Press it up. And then open it out. Envision that your abdomen muscles in the front are a hammock or a sling 
or a garter, a corset, you're grabbing them tight. I also think about those Chinese handcuffs. The more you pull your fingers apart, the tighter that little basket, the handcuff around your fingers gets. So think if you can envision that in your torso, in your core. Holding tighter, tighter, tighter. Push it up and then open out. Next we have our squat to forward fold. And then the spider lunge. I'm feeling that hammy and glute. All right. Open wide. Squat deep. Hinge it forward. Squat deep. Press it up. Drop. Hinge. If your hands come off the floor, of course, that's totally fine, depending on your flexibility. But I want us to get deep. So important to get that deep squat. Forward fold, squat, come up. Squat it in. Push the butt up. Drop the butt and rise. Did you forget about the core? I did for a split second. Bring it back. I like this right after the, that hands and knees glute set. Really feel those glutes doing the work. You should not be feeling the quads much. Okay. Face me. Wide legs. Hinge it over. Press it up and over. How low can you go? So just like our squats, we're going for lots and lots and lots of range. Good work. I've been doing some yoga sessions that have a lot of these spider lunges. I was horrible at them when I started. It's amazing how quickly your body can get open and strengthen and learn what it's supposed to do. Obviously getting healthier. Okay, after this one, we're back at the top for our last round. On our back on our mat. And then you can choose straight leg or bent knee for those ab pulls from the ground. Drive through the heel, knee lines with the toe. All right, take it down. I'm gonna go straight leg. Interlace your hands behind, pull, pull, switch, pull, pull, switch. Of course, if you need to keep your head on the ground, you are totally welcome to do that. Remember, we're going for that scoop in the belly. Scooping, scooping. Flex those feet. You should feel flexion through the muscles of your shin. Anterior tibialis, your quad, obviously the core. Dead bug is next. Build that burn, build that burn. Core temperature should definitely be rising by now. Flex deep through that belly. All right, bring your legs to the tabletop. Press that low back into the ground. So right here, we're not even moving yet. I feel such a big contraction and that heat opposite arm and leg. Pay attention to what's going on in the stabilized side. Force the work to happen. A lot of the stuff we're doing today requires self-flexion, focus, and then held flexion, even as we're moving. <clears throat> Training that in, and then on those days we add the resistance of the weight. You can get even further. Tighten through that core. Feel the low back actively press into the mat. We'll have our weights and glute bridge next. Butt comes up. Elbows come wide, press it up, turn your hands, drop elbows, rotate back, drop it down, and press. 
Take a second, focus on those booty muscles. Squeeze your knees in. A lot of times I notice that the knees open out wide and a V is created. It's just our body's natural inclination to find the easiest, least resistance way to get places, which is great for life. Or if we're running from a lion <laughs> or a crazy dog. But for us here, we want to keep the most difficult, most resisted way possible. So create railroad tracks with those thighs. Flex in deep. Oops, I forgot my overhead. All right, put your weights down. We're going to turn it over. Bird dog. Press wide into those hands. Flex it back. Tuck it in. Set it down. Extend. Flex. Tuck. Pretend you're trying to pull <laughs> an elastic band away from the wall, in front, and behind. As you extend straight, what happens with your belly and low back? Tendency is to let the belly go and you end up in like a cow pose with that low back. We don't want that here. We want to hold that belly strong, contract it deep toward the spinal column, extend, tuck. Extend, tuck. Okay, low squat, forward fold. We only have two left. And with the extra time we have, we're gonna get just a little bit of weights. Like I said, oh, I forgot, I'm dropping standing. I hope you guys did that without me. Forward fold, squat, stand. Um, like I was saying, I do wanna still throw in some weights today. So we're just gonna get a quick little round, very end. Still nothing super high intensity but enough just to wake up those muscles, keep them going and prepared for a big push next week. Open those hamstrings, then flex in and push it up. Drop, forward fold, drop, press. Okay, we have our spider lunge. Open those feet out wide. Drop it over, press it up, drop it over, press it up, nice and low, that's good. Should take you some focus and oomph to get up from that low position. Take a second at the bottom, flex in, push it up. That's it. Drop it over, drive it up, drop it over, and up. Getting wide, 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 and low. Where's the core? Upper middle back, open that chest, sink it in, press it over. All right, there you have it. Um, stretch just a quick second in between. Turn off that timer. All right, grab your weights. Rotate those shoulders back and down. I think we forgot. Oh, that's what we forgot. Like, why do we still have two minutes left? Our glute set. That's okay. All right, open your hands out in front of, in front of you. We're just going to go bicep curls for 10. Still kind of sticking with your mid-weight. Nothing too crazy. Three, four, core strong. Seven, tuck that tailbone under. Where's the chest? Can you lift it any higher off the rib cage? Last one here, let it go all the way down. We're gonna go into an upright row. So just turn your hands, elbows come up, one. So feel the upper back pinch together as the elbows come up. A lot of times when a, with an upright row, I see this, like the chest coming forward a bit. 
open the chest, slide those shoulder blades down, and focus on the shoulders, bringing those elbows up. Elbows lead the way, hands just to the chest. Eight, nine, and 10. Okay, we're gonna hinge forward. Let your weights hang long. I'm gonna do a back tap. Hinge forward, butt back, back flat. 10. Belly strong. Seven. Try to stop your weights when they're at the thighs. If they feel heavy, you can come all the way around. Give it a shot, you'll see, you'll notice how much easier it is to get that full, or to, to get your weights back, if you get that kind of swing from the front. Draw your belly button in, three, two, let's get our upper middle back and triceps, and one. Okay, back to curl, let's go through it all one more time. Three, think about everything, especially if the weights feel a little light, and they should. Six, draw that belly button back to the spine. Nine, and 10, rotate your hands, elbows come up. So envision you have a string on the outside of those elbows, underside, pulling up. But the string is actually those mid delts. We're at five. Keep that neutral pelvis. Incorporate your back. has the ability to really help brace and support. But make sure the body, that upper body, is really stable and still. So the back is the support, the core is the support, but the shoulders do the work. Okay, let those weights kind of dangle down. Hinge it forward, tap it back. One, two. Can you grab your belly anymore? In control as the weights drop back. Eight, nine, ten. All right, our timing's great. Let's go one more set. One. I like this little bonus. Grab your weights at the end. Five. Watch that pelvis. Are those hips neutral? What's going on with your chest as you lift and as you lower? Nine and 10. Okay, rotate those hands. Elbows come wide. Tall, tall chest. Be in control, especially as the weights drop. Five. Drag your belly button back towards your spinal column. Eight, nine, 10. Okay, hinge forward. Let those weights kind of hang long. Back taps behind. Strength is good. Hopefully you're getting beyond physical. Uh, it's what we see with our with our vision, visual <laughs> attributes with your exercise, weightlifting and fitness. Last one. All right, um, I struggle to let anything go. So we're gonna go back and get that glute set. Sorry, <laughs> hands and knees, we got time. All right, hands and knees, here we go. Push that heel up and then open out. So hopefully you're getting beyond those visual attributes. They're awesome, they're nice, they're rewarding, and they're motivating. But also remember all the good that's going on inside, mentally, in those organs, psychologically. It's crazy. 
especially as we age. I don't know if you know this or not, but we're all aging. <laughs> and as we're aging, sticking up with this stuff is honestly a little bit even more motivational for me uh, in the psychological sense. Watching anxiety, depression, stress. So good to keep up. All right, other leg with this stuff. So thanks for joining me. Staying up with it, staying healthy. We're all in it together. Hopefully you are inspiring others to fitness, whether doing these videos with you or another avenue or calling people up to go on your mile walk or jog. Press it up, flex through that heel. See if you can grab a little flexion into your obliques as you're opening that leg out to the side. Wrap your elbows back towards your thighs. Press through that heel, open out to the side. Tighten into those transverse muscles and time. Beautiful job. Okay, I'm glad we got that. I feel way better. <laughs> Let's grab a quick stretch. Stretching is also super important. Big toes together. Knees are super wide. Hinge back. So you're on the tops of your feet. The arms are way out in front. Do not have your elbows drop onto the ground, though. For me, really push into those hands and then kind of drag your shoulder blades back, right? So it's almost like you're sucking your, your um, armpits up. Tug them in, slide those shoulder blades down, and you'll feel a little pull on the chest and through the shoulders. If you want to plant your forehead on the ground, go for it. You can also feel good. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and come to those hands and knees again. Bring your left foot forward for me. Hinge forward so you get that back hip flexor. And then go ahead and curl the toes under on that back leg, lifting the knee off the ground this time. If you want to keep your knee planted, of course you can. But give it a shot, picking it up. Just see how it flexes and stretches that back thigh and hip flexor a little bit more. Kind of drop that right hip down toward the ground a little more. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, put your right hand on the ground and then let your right hip rotate down. So go ahead and drop back onto that right knee and then rotate so that the outer edge of that right hip is on the ground and then lift, left arm up. So find lift out of your chest and stretch in that lower body. Wherever it hits you, it might be more on that right side. For me, it's more in my left glute. Come back around. Let's get that hamstring. Toe comes up. Pull that left hip back. Chest is reaching toward the toe. So don't worry about how low you get toward the leg, but worry about more that chest lifting and pushing toward your toe. That's really going to get the hamstring stretch that we want. Depending on who you are, you might feel more underneath your knee, and that's okay. Your body will stretch wherever it needs. It knows where it's tight. Okay, let's bring that left leg back, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Right leg forward. <laughs> Lift that left knee up off the ground, and then kind of drop that left hip down. Still keeping that right knee. Watch that, that front leg. That knee needs to stay right over. The heel. Push that chest forward a bit. Wrap those shoulders down. Okay, and then go ahead and drop that back left knee onto the ground. Plant into the left hand and rotate to the left side, kind of towards your left hip. The hip may or may not touch. Mine's not. It's just kind of the outside of that thigh. And then lift your right arm up. Open the 
the chest. <sighs> Heavy breathing helped my drainage a little. Feels good. Open nice and high. Get that stretch through that right glute. That's where I feel it anyway. Rotate back down. Toe comes up in the front. Pull the right hip back. Reach that chest toward your right toe. So on this side, I'm feeling a lot more in my calf and even all the way down into my Achilles. Pull the right hip back. Push the chest toward the toes. We'll hold about 10 more seconds. All right, bring that right foot back. We're gonna hit up a low squat and hold it there a second. So, might need your feet nice and wide. The toes are gonna point out a little. Depending on, on uh, your body systems and mechanics, you might be able to keep your toes straight ahead or a little bit more forward, and that's great too. You may need to keep one or both heels off the ground right now, and that's okay. Try to get your hips nice and low though. The chest nice and tall. Just enjoy that low squat. Feels good on the knees. Good for your internal organs, the digestive tract. <sighs> Plant your hands, just like we did in our set. Open up to where you are in a forward fold. The hips come up. Reach the upper body over the legs. Grab that core. Let's come all the way up. <sighs> all right, fantastic day 51, and I will see you tomorrow for the next step.